Hey, this is Presh Talker. Start with the pair of fractions 2 over 1 times 2 over 3. Now increase every single number in this pair by 2. This becomes 4 over 3 times 4 over 5. Once again, increase every single number in this pair of fractions by 2. We get 6 over 5 times 6 over 7. If you repeat this process infinitely many times, you'll end up with an infinite product of fractions, which are exactly equal to pi divided by 2. This formula can be more compactly written in product notation. This is the product of 2k divided by 2k minus 1 times 2k over 2k plus 1, where k runs from 1 to infinity. This fantastic formula for pi was described in 1655. Wallace was studying integrals of the form 1 minus x to the power of 1 over p, all raised to the power of q, evaluated from 0 to 1. Through extensive calculation, Wallace found a pattern. This integral was equal to p factorial times q factorial divided by p plus q factorial. While he discovered it was true for positive integers at least, he wasn't able to evaluate this integral for non-whole numbers. But he wondered what would happen if p equals q equals 1 half. The integral would simplify to the square root of 1 minus x squared evaluated from 0 to 1. This integral was familiar. It describes the area of the unit quarter circle. Therefore, it must be equal to pi divided by 4. Wallace was able to take this result for pi over 4 and combine it with interpolating his other calculations to come up with something resembling what we now say is the Wallace product formula. In fact, Wallace stumbled across another interesting result, which we know today. If you were to substitute into this factorial formula, p equals q equals 1 half, and equate it to pi over 4, you end up with this rather strange result that 1 half factorial squared is equal to pi over 4. Taking the square root of both sides means that the factorial of 1 half is equal to the square root of pi over 2. This is the value we assign to the factorial 1 half today. And it's a rather interesting thing that you can define the factorial function over non-whole numbers. I provided a separate video which gives some intuition about what factorials are for numbers that are not whole numbers. You can go ahead and watch that video. For now, I'm going to continue on with this Wallace product. The modern proof is related to integrals that Wallace was studying. We'll simplify this with the substitution that x equals cosine of theta. We'll change the limits of integration and substitute in the correct variables. We now remember the identity that 1 minus cosine squared of theta is equal to sine squared of theta. We essentially end up studying the integral of sine to the power of n. It will be convenient to study this integral from 0 to pi. So let's see what happens when we do that. We'll define i sub n as the integral from 0 to pi of sine to the power of n. We're going to integrate this by doing integration by parts. We'll set u equal to sine to the power of n minus 1 and dv equal to sine of x dx. We calculate du and v accordingly. The integral is then equal to uv minus v du. I will substitute in those terms. Now let's evaluate this. The first term is sine to the power of n minus 1 of x times negative cosine of x. We want to evaluate this from 0 to pi. 
Now sine of x is equal to zero for both pi and zero. So sine to the power of n minus one of x is also gonna be equal to zero at those values. So the first term is going to become zero. The second term has two factors of cosine of x inside the integral, rather two terms of cosine of x. So we can combine these cosines of x to get cosine squared of x multiplied by sine to the power of n minus two of x. We'll then use the formula that cosine squared of x is equal to one minus sine squared of x. We'll split this integral up into two different integrals. One integral has sine to the power of n minus two, the other integral has sine to the power of n. This allows us to write our formula in terms of i sub n minus two and i sub n. Now recalling all of this is equal to i sub n, we can then solve for i sub n. i sub n will be equal to n minus one divided by n times i sub n minus two. We've come up with a type of reduction formula. We can solve for the integral i sub n in terms of a lower powered integral i sub n minus two. And we have the ratio of i sub n over i sub n minus two equal to n minus one over n. This is going to be important. We're going to be looking at the ratio of these integrals. So I'll copy over this formula and we're going to split it up into two different cases. We can rewrite this formula in terms of just even numbers, i sub two n over i sub two n minus two. And we can also consider it just for odd numbers, i sub two n plus one over i sub two n minus one. So for even numbers, we'll start out with i sub zero. Sine to the power of zero is equal to one. So we have the integral from zero to pi of one dx. This is equal to pi. What would happen if we want to evaluate i sub two n? We have this reduction formula in terms of i sub two n minus two. Now we can apply this formula on i sub two n minus two. This gets us to i sub two n minus four. We can repeatedly apply this formula all the way until we get down to i sub zero, which is equal to pi. So we now can write i sub two n in terms of a product formula. We have pi times the product of two k minus one over two k, where k runs from one to n. We'll do a similar thing for the odd numbers. We start out with i sub one equaling sine to the power of one of x dx, going from zero to pi. This is equal to two. For a general odd number, we're going to use the reduction formula. We can then apply the reduction formula on i sub two n minus one to get to i sub two n minus three. And we can continue this all the way until we get down to i sub one, which is equal to two. So now we have i sub two n plus one in terms of a product formula. We have two times the product of two k over two k plus one, where k runs from one to n. So we have one formula for even numbers and we have another formula for odd numbers. We're going to consider the ratio of these integrals. But before we do that, we need to understand what happens as n increases. Now between zero and pi, sine of x is always between zero and one. Whenever you multiply a number between zero and one by itself, you end up with a smaller number. So every time we raise the power on sine, we're going to be smaller than or equal to what we had before. So sine to the power of two n plus one has to be less than or equal to sine to the power of two n, which is less than or equal to sine to the power of two n minus one. This means when we take the integral from zero to pi of each of these functions, we have the same inequality going on. I sub two n plus one is less than or equal to I sub two n, which is less than or equal to I sub two n minus one. We now divide each term in this inequality by I sub two n plus one. The first term becomes one. The second term becomes I sub two n over I sub two n plus one. 
And the final term becomes i sub 2n minus 1 over i sub 2n plus 1. We know this is equal to 2n plus 1 over 2n because we've calculated the ratios of these integrals before. So now what happens if we take the limit as n goes to infinity? Well, 2n plus 1 over 2n approaches the value of 1. So we have an inequality where the lower bound is 1 and the upper bound is 1. So we squeeze out the limit of the terms in between so that we get the limit as n goes to infinity of i sub 2n over i sub 2n plus 1 is equal to 1. So what is this ratio i sub 2n over i sub 2n plus 1? We can use our product formulas. We know what i sub 2n is, and then to take i sub 2n plus 1, we want to divide by it, so we take the reciprocal of each term. We end up with the product formula that pi over 2 times the product of the following fractions equals 1. We now want to solve for pi over 2, and we can do that by taking the reciprocal of each term in this product. We then end up with what we wanted to prove, which is the Wallace product formula. Pi over two is equal to the product of the two fractions, two K over two K minus one times two K over two K plus one, when K goes from one to infinity. So this is the proof of this miraculous and fantastic formula for pi. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Presh Talwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.